What was that? What was my pot? <laughs> oh no, not the pot. <sighs> it's already been repaired three times. <laughs> <laughs> Your tail is showing. I'm gonna get my tail is showing. <laughs> I don't have a longer <laughs> tail as you. <laughs> Mine's so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous. So, funding. <laughs> Give me your money. <laughs> Give me your money. <laughs> Give it to me, Arsenal. <laughs> So, in all seriousness though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so last time we were here, we said that we were going to talk about funding. Yes. And here we are talking about funding. Yes. But last time, it was also blindingly hot in here. <laughs> and we were sweating. And now we have to have our fluffy socks on because it's really cold in here. <laughs> and our, our onesies. Our onesies. <laughs> so we're cosy. We've got cosy lights. Cosy yes. vibe. Ready to talk about funding something that everyone cares about money unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> Jodie you've had a bit of bad news yeah so in our last video I applied for the Mike Cowley Trust funding and unfortunately I got the email today saying that I was unsuccessful and that's going to happen you're not going to get it every time are you no. um, it was my first application and um, Ian was really kind and he did a little add-on message to the generic rejection email saying that my application was very well written and he encouraged me to apply next year in April. And I think in a way it's a little bit of a blessing in disguise because I realised that uh, the funding that I was going for, which was to fund my Bailey book, um, to get that edited and published and out to the public. Your illustration rap book. Illustrated rap book. <laughs> 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 yeah, Bailey Finds Superpower. It's a book about uh, Bailey, which is based on one of my rats. It's a link to children and teaching. I have a teaching background and I used to teach uh, in PSHE about superpowers, which isn't a physical superpower. Sometimes it can be emotional intelligence, things like that. Um, so it's a link to that in terms of the classroom. And it's also a link to rats in me trying to promote rats in a positive way. Um, if you go to Jazz or Comics on Instagram, you can find it through Jazz or Craft. Um, those are comics I've created to kind of promote rats in a positive light because they have still quite a lot of uh, misconceptions and stigma. Yeah. So I wrote the manuscript for Bailey Finds a Superpower about three three years ago now. I wrote it during lockdown COVID times. Mm. Um, and I want to make it happen, make it a real life thing. Yeah. Um, so I applied for the funding in order to help me fund editing, support, one-to-one -one mentorship on children's books, because obviously it's my first experience doing that. Um, fortunately, I didn't get it, but they're offering it again in April um, with the next round, and uh, Ian, who emailed me today, has encouraged me to apply for that, so I will be applying for that next year and hope to get that. But I realise it's a little bit of a blessing because the funding for Mike Howley Trust, you have a set time frame to spend it in, so you have four months to spend it in, so I would have had to finish the book have it out by March of next year yeah and it's off timing a little bit because I think I would benefit in terms of book sales if I got the book out ahead of Christmas yeah um I don't see myself being able to do that this year so I would like to do that next year before Christmas next year and the next round of funding is April so that would actually work out as a much much better timeline for me yeah, but it was it was good to do it, and it's a good experience. Like I understand a little bit more about how to put funding application together. Sarah helped me a lot, so she's going to be talking to us a lot today about yes. how to do that for the funding that's coming up soon, which is the Arts Council DYCP Developing Your Creative Practice. And um, for me, I've applied to several different um, grant fundings. I haven't got all of them, but I've got a good chunk of them. Um, and from doing that, I've really learned like the the magic formula <laughs> to applying to uh, funding to get funding. And but your example shows you that sometimes even a really really well written because I, I I think it was really well written um, funding application sometimes just isn't successful because it's all depending on how many other people apply mm. and what their applications are about, and that's something you can't control. And I think reflecting, after I sent that application off, 
I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't be selected because of the pressure of having it done within a set time frame. I wasn't sure if my application come across that I would be able to achieve that in the four months. Very ambitious. And they they want to put their funding into somebody that's going to achieve that outcome. Yeah. Because they want to prove that their funding has gone to something that's worthwhile and is successful. Four months is a pretty quick turnaround though for funding applications. It is. I think if I had done it based... So I did my funding application based off my outcome being a finished, published book. I think if I had done it as training, like understanding in yeah. terms of what my outcome would be that I didn't necessarily have a finished thing but I had a first draft maybe yeah. would have come across more achievable Yeah. but the good thing about the extra time of, uh, hopefully if I were to get it next year um, between now and then I'm not going to just put, it, put a pin in it, I am going to still work on it with my own funding and my own time Yeah. Um, but I will have more illustrations towards it so it will be more of a closer to finish thing it just needs to go through the whole editing process and yeah exactly because that's where I am at the moment I still have a lot of illustrations left to finish yeah so realistically whether I would have achieved that in that time frame yeah and and that's the key thing I think is when when you're thinking about applying for funding for certain projects try and fund things you're already kind of you, you think you can do without the funding mm-hmm. I mean with the funding you can do it to this whole new level yeah but it means that if you don't yeah Yeah. it means if you don't get it you're not going to be too disappointed because you can do a a smaller modified version of it Mm. and then re you know try again next time Mm. and um, for those of you that don't know who the who what the mike howley trust is the mike howley trust is um localized to the isle of wight um it's uh it operates through the key arts on the isle of wight and it's an example of a, a very small um, funding um, organisation that you can apply to. And there's lots of those all across the country for lots of different things. Yeah. They have different requirements for different stuff. The difficulty about the Mike Howley uh, Trust is it's not strictly for um, for artists like me and Jodie, because mm-hmm. we're very much visual artists. And the Mike Howley Trust is, is more for other forms of creative so yeah so there are examples that they've they've backed before or they've funded before was um a musician to to record and create an album yeah um they have actually funded a young writer to learn about writing and things like that um but it's kind of more tailored towards theater work and things yeah more other forms of art not necessarily painting but yeah if, I, if it was just based on illustrations I wouldn't have been applicable to it, I don't think. Yeah, but because mine was about the editing towards, and the, it's tailored towards more the writing side. Yeah, yeah, not necessarily the illustrations. It's helped for me with my manuscript and publishing, yeah. which is something that they support. But yeah, pet portraits they wouldn't. Have. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have yeah, liked. exactly. And, and there's so many different types like like that. So many different um, places you can apply to. Um, and there's just loads of different options. If you dig into it, there's just there's so much. There's little pots of funding here and there you can apply to from like, I think the smallest amount I got was £100. And that was from the University of uh, Falmouth that I was attending at the time. And they had these like little tiny pots of funding, micro funding. Um, and then the most that I've, I've got is from the Arts Council for Developing a Creative Practice. Um, and that pot of funding is really sought after. It's really, really competitive. And at the time of this podcast going out, um, round 18, I think, is open. So it's like a rolling thing. Um, they have, I don't know how many it is per year, but I think it's maybe like two or three rounds, maybe a bit, maybe just two a year. Um, and they have a small window where you can apply for it and then you're supposed to wrap it up within a year so you get 12 months to spend that You get a lot more time. A lot more time. But I guess they're funding bigger projects, aren't they? So they understand that that's going to take a long time whereas the more localised funding, the Mike Powley, was sort of smaller, more quick chunks of money. Quick turnaround projects. But all of it's incredibly helpful. But the trouble that I had is knowing where to find those, how to find them out. Because I was going to ask you, how did you find out about the DYCP? How did you first hear about it? Oh, God, that is a good question. (laughs) Where did I first hear about it? (laughs) I actually think it was through talking to someone. Um, Oh, yeah, it was talking to uh, the guys behind the Ventnor Fringe Festival. Um, They 
suggested they actually suggested to me early on that I apply for the Mike Howley funding oh, okay. which I did I applied uh, two two years and I got both oh, um, but the rules were a lot different then yeah um, so I think it was kind of early on in the funding that they were doing um, and then they recommended that I try applying for Arts Council funding um, and the Arts Council as an organization are publicly funded so they get uh, money from the government. I think they also get um, lottery funding and they have funding streams from elsewhere. But it's okay. the, the basis of it, of it is it's public money. So they want it to go to a public good mm. um, to do with us. Um, whereas the Mike Cowley Trust is money that was left by a man called Mike Cowley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really important to understand what kind of thing you're applying to, what their aims are as an organisation. Um, and for the DYCP, which is the abbreviation we'll probably use for the rest of the podcast <laughs> rather than keep saying yeah. developing your great practice. The DYCP is quite a special bit of funding because its whole purpose is for developing your creative practice. So it's really about the artist, the creative and it's about them, their experience, and them developing their craft, getting better, learning something. It's to give you that boost that you wouldn't otherwise have, isn't yes. it? Yes. To support and give you a leg. Yeah. Leg <laughs> and, it, yeah. and it's also open to artists in any stage of their career, mm. um, as long as you can demonstrate things that you've done before. Mm. And you can get good, you need a reference and things like that, certain things in the application you need. But you could be a really experienced artist who's been doing it all of their lives, um, and then you decide that you want to change tack or, or learn something oh, new, develop something new, yeah. develop something new and you, you can still apply for it. It really doesn't matter like what, what experience you've got. Or you could be someone like me, who had was, I think I was like one year out of university, finishing my illustration course, um, and I applied for it. And the very rare thing about my application was that I um, applied. I, I applied for it. Um, I left myself one week before the deadline, yeah. before I started. <laughs> That's what we were talking about in the last video, though, episode two. Is yeah. that sometimes Sarah works incredibly well under pressure? Incredibly well <laughs> under pressure. Don't we don't advise everyone else to? Do all this, all <laughs> of my all of my suggestions are do not do what I did. <laughs> it worked for me, but it was it was it was luck. Like um, I would. Uh, definitely advise against doing that mm. um though i suppose i didn't go in completely cold because i had experience of applying for other funding mm. and i'd also been researching the arts council for quite some time um to do with another pot of funding that they have which is called um project grants and that's the thing when i started i had no idea the difference between all of these different funding things that's that's where i'm at at the moment where yeah um i've only just come across and it, i wouldn't have known about like Howley Trust Funding if it wasn't for me joining the Isle of Wight Creatives Network yeah. and them sending the email out and me reading through and saying oh actually there's something that might be helpful to me for what I'm working on currently. Uh, the DYCP was flagged for me recently by joining the AN. Yeah. Um, yeah. Getting the AN membership and getting that email from them. I still don't understand fully all the different what all, it is. all the different things that are out there. I mean, I don't know if you have a general overview of what things are out there to offer. Uh, There's probably more than what you know of. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I only really know the ones that I've applied for. So um, AN is what you just mentioned. Is um, oh, what does it stand for? Artist Network, I think. <laughs> oh. We will include it below. I think it's the artist. Network. I think it's the artist. Network. But we're, if we're wrong, we'll I'll, I'll edit it. I'll edit it. <laughs> so most of what I've found comes from lots of late night googling, <laughs> reading other people's like blogs, watching YouTube videos, talking to people, just chatting, and them suggesting I look into something. Um, I mean, I've only found out about AN because. I was looking to get personal liability insurance as an artist to like develop, like run workshops. And my mentor, who was paid for by the DYCP, which I'll go to in a minute, um, Alice Scott Hawkins, she said, why have you thought about the AN? It's a flat membership fee for the year. It's like 30 quid or something. Yeah, it's not yeah. much. At all. Super, super and cheap. Yeah. And tangent you, from that, I've 
we talk about the uh, public liability insurance. Yeah, as well. you get public liability insurance with it, just part of the membership, and it's so easy to sign up. And you get it for and a year. So many resources as well. Oh, so many artists. resources. I'm, I'm definitely going to link it for anyone artists stumble upon it and heard of it because I nearly spent two hundred and ninety pounds on public liability insurance. Yeah, because I wanted to join a makers market group, and they needed you to have at least uh, five million cover, and. So I'm so fortunate that I chose to talk to Sarah about it because <laughs> yeah. if I hadn't had that conversation I was about to pay for that when I just happened to have a conversation with Sarah and I asked if she had public liability insurance and she told me about the website Yeah, and the fact that it's only £30 a year which is nothing compared to what I was going to pay so plus cheap. all the extra benefits of them oh, yeah. signposting new things they signpost commission opportunities, yeah. training, we had the webinar offers and things like that. They assign posters to DYCP to oh, us they, recently. You get like email um, lists and things that give you yeah. updates. I mean, half of it I, I haven't even looked into. There's, there's so much on there that I could probably use. And utilize. And oh. that's all for £30 a year. It's amazing. When I was about to spend £290 um, yeah. just for the insurance alone. <laughs> and also, so, when you're a member of that, you can also apply to their grant funding. So they do, they offer up to £2,500 for a, like a one-off grant um, for artists to do a project. So you pay £30 a year and then you can apply for this and they, they fund quite a lot of artists as well. Um, I think it's a yearly thing. Um, so I applied for that and got that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to have copies of Sarah's application. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go into tips and things from these. In the yes, yeah, I've got, I've got so many, I've got so many. So basically, when you want to find out about different funding streams, just do loads of Googling, read around, talk to people, ask as many people as you, as, as you can. And then as you come across stuff, just bookmark it, make a list, make a few notes about when the deadlines are or what, what it is. And then when you're thinking or ready to make application for something, you've got a list there that you can, you can approach. Um, and I do that, my my, my um, uh, web browser's just got like links and links and links and links and links <laughs> of things <laughs> I'm like. Try and join creative networks and things like yes. that, so that, because word of mouth is a lot of it oh, as well, isn't it? Definitely. Because yeah. some of these like little funding things are, are little and so they aren't very good at telling they don't, people about well, they don't them. have the marketing budget to yeah. market it up, I suppose. And rely on, rely on word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so join local artist networks. There's, there's there might be one in your local area or there might be one nearby or you can join things like the AN which is like a virtual artist network. Um, there's groups on Facebook, there's like so much stuff. So once you've you know got your list of things that you want to apply for and you've got an idea of maybe you've got some ideas about what you want to spend it on, you want to start doing your research. So if we talk about this in the context of DYCP, that's probably going to be the most helpful yeah. because it's the most competitive, most sought after funding because it is directed at artists, it's public funding money and it happens quite often and they fund quite a lot of artists as well. But I think something like a third of all applications get accepted. Yeah. So you're more likely not to be accepted than you are accepted. But don't let that stop you from applying. No. <laughs> just going through the application process and getting that yeah. feedback. You're only going to get better at it every time you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And also, if you are su successful in the DYCP funding, you might be able to then go on and get funding for a larger project through their project grants. So while the DYCP is for individuals for their own um, development, the project grants are for projects. So it can cover all sorts of sizes of projects, but the main focus and the difference between those two, project grants, they're focused on the project outcomes. The DYCP, they're focused on the development outcomes for you as an individual. Mm -hmm. So if you're new to this, haven't applied for funding before, start at the DYCP or smaller ones like you've done but DYCP before you go on to anything bigger like project grants because that was that was the confusion I got because I saw project grants and I thought oh I really want to do a project mm -hmm. <laughs> this makes sense I'll go for this <laughs> but I was jumping at the deep end without you know I needed that period of developing my own work and finding out what kind of style I have and who I before am as an artist you, yeah before I have an idea I mean now that I've done my year which ended in uh, August 2023 is so the August of this year 
I have such a better idea about what I want to achieve, what my style is, what I'm happy doing, what I'm good at, what I'm bad at. Mm. And that's the entire point of the DYCP. And that funding supported you to do that? Yeah. Because you were able to spend money on mentorship and things like that, but otherwise, yes, you might have not done for the budget. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So when I was looking at the project grants and I was researching the Arts Council, the best bit of advice that I got given um, was to look at their um, creative, so they've got a strategy, they've got a strategy for like five years at a time that tell you and the public how they want to spend their money and what, they, what outcomes they want to see. Their whole thing is that they want um, England to be more creative <laughs> and they love culture and arts and they want to see more of it. But they've got lots of specific headlines under that and lots of specific targets. So if you really read into that, and it's available on their website, you get a really good idea of what they're asking for from you. And they also you also get an idea of what kind of people they're sort of looking to invest in. Not necessarily people, I guess, but more of areas. So they have identified areas that don't typically get that much funding that they want to put That's more money into. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the most people watching this are probably going to be local to our area. So the good news is, is the Isle of Wight is an area of focus for them. They want to invest money here because we do tend to get forgotten mm -hmm. and we have this amazing opportunity to accelerate and build on all of the cultural things that are happening. So use that to your advantage, use your location to your advantage. If it's something they're looking for, make sure you reference that in your application, make sure you exemplify how you being a local artist to this area and your own development is going to benefit your community. Because remember, they have public money, they're publicly funded, the benefit has to be to the public. So it has to be to you as an artist, but it's only going to tick multiple boxes if it's if also got a wider share Because that's the advice yeah. that you gave me for my application as well. Because yeah. I hadn't... I was just thinking about my development in terms of understanding children's book formats more, understand formatting, understand publishing, understand, like get help with editing my book. Um, and you prompted me to think about how that's then going to roll on to the community. How am I going to use that to, to benefit other people yeah. like the island? So that challenged me to think about it a little bit more about how I'm going to use the book once it's created. Yeah. Because if you think about it, like, um, all, all um, funding bodies and little organisations, big ones, small ones, they have a limited amount of funds. And if they could, they would help everyone, but they can't, which is why they get you to apply. <laughs> and then they see which okay, ones they can find. I don't find. envy them. It must be really hard. <laughs> Very <laughs> hard. Yeah. So they're looking for applications that, for them, as they're going down, they're like, yes, tick, 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 all of these different boxes. It doesn't have to tick all of the boxes, of course, but as many as possible. So you've got to first find out what are their boxes mm. and then how do you fit into them. And that's how I did my application. So I'd already thought about that a little bit when it came to my me applying for a project grant. So when it came to doing the DYCP and I had that one week, mm. um, yes, I had one week of writing it, but I had all of this background knowledge. You spent a lot of time thinking about it yeah <laughs> a lot of yeah. time thinking about it you weren't going in cold <laughs> and to be honest that's the I think that's the most important part of it the writing is is the process but the the bit before that is the most important part spend yeah. the majority of time your time researching it which is kind of what I did as well I spent a lot of time looking through the advice documents and I made notes of like what things what criteria I had to tick and um, how, what I was supposed to use funding for, what I was allowed to use funding for, not allowed. Because I had to read all of their guidelines a little bit more carefully to yeah. get an idea of where I fit in that myself. Yeah. Because um, I wasn't 100% sure on what they would fund as part of my development for the book. Um, so yeah, a lot of it was kind of a, a bit of a mental effort of think, thinking it through and using advice from ex people with experience. So like, if you're fortunate to have a creative network, so like, Georgia and the Isle of Wight oh. Creative Network. She's somebody that I could have gone and spoke to, but I had a Sarah. So <laughs> I spoke to Sarah instead. Um, definitely use that to help you, someone with experience, especially if you're a first time applying. Oh, definitely. And it was yeah. and it was Georgia who was like, "Why are you applying for a project grant? You should be applying for a DYCP." <laughs> Thank you, Georgia, <laughs> for making it very obvious to me that I had noticed before. <laughs> um, so without, and then she told me that, and we'd had this like Zoom call, like 
a week before the deadline. So I was like, oh, <laughs> quick, get it going. And instead of, I could have waited, but <coughs> me being so impatient, I just was like, oh, I'm just going to do it. And it paid off because you, you know, you put it, even if you hadn't have got it, you would have had a, something, a structure to yeah. start with for the next time you applied. And you just build on that and strengthen it. Yeah. So it's not a waste of time, I don't think. But what, you were very lucky when you did. Yes, you did yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> spend, more, spend a little bit more time on it, check through it and make sure that it's more polished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of the time that um, you spend on it should be researching and just really delving into what they fund, what you're allowed to spend it on, um, how long you got to spend it? Yeah, because I it wasn't clear that I had a four month deadline until I started reading all the like specific guidelines and things, and then I read you've got to have spent the money and you've got to have an outcome in that four months. And I was like, I've got to really think about the timeline of yes. my my project and how it's going to help me. Whereas you had a year for the DYCP and when you applied for it last time. Yeah, I mean I like thinking about things in terms of years because. I was able to split my project into 12 months and think, what am I going to achieve in the 12 months? Mm -hmm. And telling you now, I overestimated what I could achieve in 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> and then we all... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Most people do. You overestimate how much you can realistically do. Mm -hmm. um, but I tried to make sense of it as much as possible on paper and in my head so that the person reading my application could get a really clear vision of what it is I'm going to do um, and I sort of split my spending into three areas um, I kept because I had was so prepared for a project grant I kept thinking about it in terms of a deliverable oh, piece of work like a, yeah. like a exhibition you know that kind of thing but it doesn't the money you, it doesn't have to be for that I mean that can be a bonus thing but it doesn't have to be the main thing so something they recommend on the website is thinking about networking and mentoring. And I actually, n mentoring for me was an afterthought because I was like, oh, I don't know if I meet all the criteria for this. I'd probably need to think of something. Mm. Oh, let's just think mentoring. Um, and through the Isle of Wight Creative Network, um, there was Alice Scott Hawkins, mm. who is a um, artist in Southampton and she does um, artist development as well as her own practice and she had done some free sessions for yeah. the creative network uh, but I didn't know that much about her but I went on her website and thought oh, I'll just see what kind of things she mentoring she does and then I realized that I actually really loved her work and that we have a lot in common <laughs> <laughs> and I was like wow I actually really like this person um, so I just you know, literally I think it was like two days for the deadline I pinged her across the email and said um, I'm applying for a DYCP. I know it's like really close thing, but could you just give me a quote for how much oh. mentoring would be? Mm. And um, she could have not applied, or you know, not applied in time. Um, you know, and I might have just made it up or something for the <laughs> application. Um, but what actually happened was something even better. And she got back to me and said she looked at my portfolio because I linked her my portfolio, um, and she said that she really liked my work and she'd be interested in mentoring me. Um, she offered to read my application for me, which she did. Oh, and she gave yeah, me feedback and really she nice. knew there was a deadline, so she mm -hmm. did it. Um, and then, out of everything I spent the money on, Alice was probably the most worth it out of that. Yeah. Um, she, yeah. And she helped you with your application. I didn't know that. That's incredible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, Don't be afraid to ask for help or, or just to ping an email to someone and say, would you look at this? Mm -hmm. Worst they can say is no. Or not apply. I think that's the thing. Like I stop myself from a lot of opportunities because of the nervousness of rejection or not being received the, the way that I think it's going to be received. Yeah. But then you don't know unless you do it. Exactly. You just got to put yourself out there. Sometimes I think you do. And it definitely paid off for you. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah. With Alice, yeah, she gave me some really solid advice on my application, um, and then you know I got it. And also she was doing it her own DYCP year at the same time oh, really? <laughs> yeah so she'd recently had done an application so it was fresh in her mind oh, so I she see. ended up being the perfect person to ask yeah um so you know just talk to as many people ask the questions and the thing is people love being asked their opinion on things if you say 
I want to do this, what do you think? Or have you got any advice for me? Or I'm interested in doing that. Most of the time, people are like, yeah, I want to tell you what my thoughts are. Yeah, and they want to be that's supportive exactly what that. yeah. we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we're doing for you. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you think to yourself, oh, I wish, I wish I'd had someone to tell me this. When you find it yourself, you stumble upon it. You kind of think, oh, I wish there was something out there that could kind of pass that knowledge on. Yeah. Um, which is what we're here doing, really. It's just all the things <laughs> that we pick up with passing on as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, when I, you were looking into mentoring, weren't you? Did you yeah, I was looking at a one-to-one mentorship. Well, I, I applied for the mentorship with Mick Smith. Yeah, she got which that. Which was, yeah, I, I understand how beneficial mentorship is now for oh, doing yeah. that experience. It's amazing how much just talking through your ideas with somebody can be really helpful. Especially um, when they're creative as well. Yeah, and then I looked at, because um, obviously he was really helpful with business mentorship and he helped guide me in different thoughts and um, research where to research for ideas for my book, the whole, you know, project that I'm working on. Um, so when I was looking at this funding, I did look at mentorship, one-to-one mentorship for specifically children books, so I can get more focused advice on that to just go on top of what I've already mm. learned along the way. Um, and that's something I'm probably still going to go ahead and do, because um, I, I was going to fund a lot of the project myself, so I might spend some money on that mentorship ahead of time. Um, and then apply again in April. Yeah, I Hopefully. would say that <laughs> <laughs> mentorship is definitely the, the most worthwhile thing. Um, and it doesn't like I did twelve months with Alice. We did a session, a Zoom session once a month. Um, and then as my DYCP went along and I was coming up to new things, I was able to reflect on it with her. She could give me advice. She gave me so many good tips. Um, she invited me to her her uh, solo exhibition and I went and met her there that was really fantastic and it's really beneficial and there's lots of different types of mentors and mentors that do lots of different things and also there's lots of different types of workshops as well and I think for creatives you're always learning learning can be doing it yourself at home but you can also do it with other people and so that is something that you can include in your DYCP they say you've seen a really cool workshop or conference or or mm. you know something that you want to take part in and it's like miles away but yeah sometimes the funding can go towards your travel and yeah expenses, expenses put, to get somewhere put everything in that you can think mm. of put in your your travel put in your hotel put in your cost of food while you're there um any tickets um so there's a um, the quentin blake uh, Centre for Illustration in London and they have some amazing workshops and I keep missing out on this um, one workshop that I really want to do but I'd love to go there and do workshops in person um, some of these places do digital, like online ones as well have a look around you know say if there's an art gallery you like going to see if they do any workshops if there's an artist you really like look on their website maybe they do a workshop or maybe they do mentorship <laughs> or maybe they do mentorship just yeah okay. make a list of these things as you come across it and they're all things that you can you can um, include in your funding application and also the most important thing to remember it wasn't didn't didn't apply for the mike howley trust but for dycp you can claim for your time yeah. and make sure you value your time in that application you've got to set yourself maybe an hourly rate or a day rate or a half day rate. Stick to it for your application as long as it's consistent through all of the activities you do and it comes within the budget, which I don't think I've said yet, which is now 12,000, so they've increased it. Okay. But 12,000 is the maximum you can apply for. Um, so say you want to do mentoring and you want to do an hour a month for 12 months. Um, you pay for the mentor's time, but also pay for your own time. Say you want to spend, I don't know, 20 hours a month doing um, like portraiture practice. Claim for that. Say you want to go to London to go to the Quentin Blake Museum, um, Quentin Blake Centre for Illustration, mm. and you just want to go and look around an exhibition or go to the new the Portrait Gallery, the National Portrait Gallery. Claim for how much time you're going to spend doing that. You know, oh, so like an artist fee. And that. Yeah, yeah, it's your artist fee. Um, for anything you go along to, if you go, you plan to go to networking sessions. Plan for your pay for your time at the networking sessions and the travel yeah. and the travel um, to get there, um, and it can all form part of your, your application. So, can they choose to if they accept you? Can they go for your maximum, or can they choose to give you less? 
I think with DYCP, it's exactly what you've applied for. Asked for. It's okay. either yes or no. Mm-hmm. But other other um, funding places might be different. So the second time I went for my Cowley Trust, they gave me half rather than the full amount. Oh, okay. Um, because they said you've had funding before, um, but we would like to fund this, so we're going to give you half. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because they, I guess they have the total budget that they assign for a year. So if they might have added you in, but they only had so much to give you. Yeah, so they've given you some, so they could afford to give more. Yeah, something. maybe they had that much left over, and you know, it worked to offer me. And again, I, I don't envy them at all. They're actually really hard. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking at all these people with great ideas and yeah possibilities, and you can only choose so many. So it must be incredibly difficult. Mm. And a really good resource, actually, for assessing what's worked for other people and what the Arts Council funded before is a website called The White Pube. Have you okay. The White Pube? No. <laughs> so The White Pube... Pu- odd name. I know. <laughs> I haven't actually looked into the history of why it's called The White Pube. <laughs> but it's um, these two writers and they write blogs and they also do podcasts and things. Mm. Um, but alongside that, they've also started up a database of successful applications i hope i'm remembering it right and it's the white pube and i haven't just brought them up for no reason <laughs> but they i think it's them they have a database of successful applications and people self-submit their application if it's been ses- successful oh so you can review yeah. formats so that was something i was going to ask as well um because i when i did my application recently i did the format as canva on canva yeah. and then i downloaded it as a, a pdf which i sent across um how did you do yours for the dycp well, 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 you're asking about Grantium. And for anyone who's applied for anything in the Arts Council before, they're going to know why I've said it like that. And that's because the Arts Council have their own funding platform called Grantium, and it's the oh. most annoying thing you'll ever use in your entire life. <laughs> oh, why is that? It's so hard to use, it's so complicated, and it's really tiny writing, and it's really confusing, and it's, yeah, super irritating. So my big, my biggest tip would be mm. find the questions, paste them into a Word document. Sorry, I'm just getting marshmallow. All I over. know my it's everywhere. Just <laughs> there would be a second, and then you go. <laughs> I don't want to rustle over your uh, talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the marshmallow. It's made a marshmallow wall <laughs> on top of the hot chocolate. <laughs> You're going to have fun editing this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I... Marshmallow free? I am marshmallow free and I will not sit while you speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, good. so, don't write your answers in Grantium, whatever you do. If As soon as you decide, okay, I'm going to give DYCP a go, go to the Arts Council website, find Grantium, set up an account because they don't authorise you straight away. It takes a little time. Um, so, so yeah, you don't want to be trying to do that last, last minute. You definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I'd already thought about the project grant, so I was already part of it. So I didn't ah. have that wasn't part of my one yeah. week rush. <laughs> um, set up an account, get authorised, find the questions, paste them into a Word document, answer them there, then pay, copy and paste them over because it's so irritating. <laughs> so you have to do the application all in one go, do you? Can you dip out and come back into it? Or y- yeah, you can save and leave. So you oh, can okay. edit a bit and then come back and then. But um, I would say um, try not to do that too much because you might get confused um, because it is very confusing. So because you might so prepare prepare ahead of time and prepare prepare outside of the Grantium platform. Um, How do you know what the questions are ahead of time before you start applying for it? There is a template that other creators have made. I don't know if it's the white people or another creator, but I do have a link to it, so. include it as part of this but also the arts council do have a list of questions that you can download but their template isn't as friendly as this other one this other creators made okay use that and answer the questions there i ended up having like three or four word documents that i was like brainstorming in Mm -hmm. so i had one document that i copied and pasted the headlines from the let's create strategy which is the arts council strategy so i copied their headlines and some of the bullet points so i could look at that and then start filling in underneath the How ways to it. yeah the ways in which just to sort of get the ideas going it's, that's exactly like writing an essay at university though isn't it yeah <laughs> like making sure that your essay goes back to the assessment criteria like this 
the success criteria. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, you've just got to think when they're reading it, this is what they're looking for. Yeah. So try and even don't be afraid to copy and paste some of the same words, like the same Get phrases and stuff they use. Yeah. Just reuse what what they say. Um, and then I had another document that was the template, and I was writing underneath. And then I had a third document, which was my budget. Um, and what I plan to spend on things mm. um, and that moved around and I changed it and you know until I got a good picture but it's good to be prepared and spend a lot of time faffing around with everything yeah. before you go and fill it in on but I think writing. you going back to the criteria every time and then rechecking that's probably why you're unsuccessful because you're making sure it, every part of it tailored to yes to that yeah and you know, some of their some of their headings aren't going to be applicable all the time because mm. some of because they don't just fund individuals and projects; they fund, um, you know, like arts organisations as well. So I reference the Ventnor Fringe; they're run by the um, the Ventnor Exchange, and they've recently become an Arts Council funded organisation. The Key Arts also is, so they apply as well. So the Arts Council has a strategy that covers all of this stuff: big, small. Uh, very very local national international stuff so not all of it is going to be completely relevant but you know find the bits that you think relate to you and your project idea and your plans for yourself and then the other thing that might help is they actually do an easy read version which is like big letters and it's supposed to be an accessible format for um, people who might find the other format more difficult to read huh. but the good thing about the easy read is it gives you the really core key information so hmm. you don't have to read through all of the extra kind of extra stuff you yeah. know because this is a document that's like about their grand plan so it's going to have lots of uh, yeah. grand stuff in it but the easy read it's just got bam 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 yeah. bam get to the main <laughs> stuff yeah <laughs> find okay. the main stuff and then if you want to read more go to the other version hmm. i guess in summary then for the research is um First, first thing, head to the Arts Council website, read as much as you can on the Arts Council website, read their strategy. Then go and find other websites to read, like the White Pube, that might have um, success stories and templates. Actually, no, the very first is you read Sarah's Substack, which is my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't plug yourself, Sarah, my God. Yeah, I, the same time as this going out is going to be my stop, Substack post, which will be part one of my several-part DYCP series. Yeah. Um, I'm going to cover... The first bit before you, you you apply, budgeting and what to spend it on, and then I think I'll do a bit about um, outcomes, about what what's a realistic outcome, mm. you know, a timeline yes. would be good. How to timeline your project? But I think yeah, definitely go to Sarah's Substack and read that. She's going to give you a step by step how to essentially of how to be successful. Yes, and all my links. So I've got loads of links and stuff in there. And yeah, 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 get your yeah. bookmark ready because it's. <laughs> yeah which i will pinch some as well for youtube that's okay so if you will find our yeah, video first definitely. i'll link them to your substack put it underneath and then <laughs> yeah so is there anything else about the dycp that you want clarifying so we've covered how to prepare for it yeah the lovely website heads mm. up how to use <laughs> <laughs> what sort of things you can spend it on we've covered that yep it's how often well you sort of gave an estimate of yeah, they I don't do. quite know. I could probably look it up, but I think yeah. it's it's more but than once a year anyway. But if you're seeing this now, there's one soon, isn't there? Yeah, so it's opening soon. This, as the time of this podcast comes out, um, as well, it will have probably already started or just started, and it finishes middle of December. But then after a few months, there'll be another funding round come out. So do, how long do they give you? When, so when does it open? Do they give you a month to I think a, it's apply? it's a calendar it? month, yeah. They don't really change the terms that much. No, the only thing they might change is, you know, if you can apply if you've had unsuccessful applications. So I think oh. if you've had two unsuccessful applications, you have to wait before you can apply again. Oh. And if you've had a successful application, you have to wait before you can apply again. So they try and make it fair. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the only thing. Mm. They also go into depth about what kinds of creative output they fund. So I know there are certain issues around publishing and, and anything that makes money, like money making activities. So like for me, for publishing a book, it wouldn't necessarily be as DYCP. If if part of it is funding publishing costs, yeah, then because you're making money off that's of more it, of a project. That might be a project grant, but there's something they find it because it's public fund, it's public money. Mm. It can't necessarily then make you 
loads of money you can't profit off of it you can't profit yeah you can't profit loads off of it mm. um but say if you're going to do an event that's ticketed mm. but you can put some of that ticketed money to back towards your costs mm. then that's okay um and some of these applications as well ask you to have um match funding i think that's more applicable to the project grant than it is to the dycb what's match funding so sometimes when you're applying for funding, they will say you have to have, I don't know, 10% of it, of your whole project cost has to be funded from elsewhere. Oh, so you fund part of it yourself. And then... Yeah. Yeah. And match funding doesn't have to be someone giving you cash. It could be um, benefiting kind. So, for example, I was thinking of doing a project with the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, mm -hmm. and they said that they would give me the room for free. So you'd calculate how much they would normally charge someone for that room. Oh, and that's a benefit in kind of thing. And then that's match funding. Yeah. So, so would that include things like backers? If you had backers for a project and you got some funding from that and then some funding from the yeah. arts council. Okay. So say if a, I don't know, like a, a private individual wanted to give you a grant to do uh, mm. your fund, your project mm. and then you got the rest from the, you know, the arts council. That's that right. oh, okay. Yeah, all sorts of things. Or it could be your own funds as well. It could be your own funds. Say mm -hmm. if you did a, a like a GoFundMe or something and you raised a certain amount of money and then you wanted the rest from the Arts Council, mm -hmm. you know, you can use that as well. We did like car boot sale. <laughs> car boot sale. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I don't think that's applicable with the DYCP. I can't quite remember now, but I don't think it is. It sounds like, obviously, developing your creative practice, it sounds like it's mainly focused on what opportunities you're going to give yourself to learn and improve yeah not necessarily create something yeah and you yeah. can create something out of it but the focus should be about what you will learn from creating yeah. so for example how you will blossom <laughs> how you will blossom <laughs> so my my project i think i didn't fully fully uh finish how, what my three streams were earlier actually now i think about it so one was alice which is my mentoring so that mm. was supposed to be my section about reflection learning and also part of that was uh, networking as well. So my thoughts were I was going to do um, do some reflection with Alice. I'll go do networking sessions to meet other people. Um, and I might go and go to exhibitions and things like that. So I can just sort of broaden my horizons. Then another one was about creation. So I wanted to do something I hadn't done before, which was animation. So I wanted to do some Skillshare classes on animation. And also do a project with um, my friend Rhiannon, who is a filmmaker. Um, so I wanted to collaborate with her to do a sort of mini project within my DYCP, mm. which was to film something and do some illustrations. Now, I, when I applied, thought I was going to do more of these. And the reality of it, I didn't even finish one of them. <laughs> so, you know, I, I learned that I vastly overestimated how much time I had mm. and also how difficult it is collaborating with someone else because yeah because you're on a set timeline for your own they've obviously got their own other they've got their own life going on that they're yeah. Trying to do, yeah and i mean you know um anyone who's an adult knows how difficult it is trying to coordinate to, work, to coordinate <laughs> to, you know, yeah, yeah. your time table got with many, other adults many, many many things going on in our lives <laughs> um so i wanted to do work with um Rhiannon. And the interesting thing about that is you can, as part of your DYCP, you can include the costs of other, other artists. So obviously there's mentoring costs with Alice, mm -hmm. but I was able, part of mine, to get a thousand pounds to give uh, Rhiannon to work with me on this project. So I paid for her time as well. <laughs> um, Rhiannon's done her bit, it's just me now who has to do the illustration bit and I will get around to do it eventually. <laughs> um, and then the third section of my funding I wanted to discover whether or not I could do workshops so I wanted to deliver two workshops one was going to be in a school and that was on the topic of women on the railway um, um, that was quite really, successful wasn't it yeah so that was really successful that's for International Women's Day and the students were absolutely adorable they were year five and so cute and so engaged and it went exactly how I wanted it to go mm. brilliant <laughs> No notes. <laughs> and it was really lovely actually bumping into one of the students that are in your class. Yeah, I was exactly. out with Sarah at the cafe and we bumped into her. And she was like, I remember you. <laughs> you came into my school. <laughs> and that was really lovely. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So some of the things that I um, asked for funding around that was I was a money to pay for a DBS check, mm. um, money to pay for the AM membership so I could get uh, public liability insurance, mm. um, and also money for the material. So I bought like a bunch of pens and pen and pencils and scissors and glue sticks. Um, but a lot of the papers I got donated, people donated them to me. So I went in and I delivered that and it went it went really, really well. Then I also wanted to do a second workshop, which I did, the Vent French Festival. Mm-hmm. And that actually didn't go as as how I planned it to go. Oh, no. um, I've done a Substack post about me, what my thoughts were and how it went. Um, and it's not a bad thing that it didn't go well. It was actually a really good thing because now I know the contrast between those two workshops which one works better, what format is the best for for that kind of thing. Um, Definitely not drop-in, it's definitely got to be everyone start at the same time, finish at the same time. Yeah, when you are (laughs) trying to introduce people on different stages, it must be quite tricky. And people are coming and going, it wasn't, you know, everyone could walk in and walk out. Mm. But I did develop a lovely little mini exhibition for that that I really, really liked. So... When you're thinking about applying, thinking about what is realistic that you can achieve at the end of it and also how you're going to measure your own success, that's really important because at the end you have to do uh, a feedback form about what went well. I'll show the receipts. (laughs) Show the receipts. You also got to say what you spent it on, you know, and if that the money you end up spending more or less on it. Um, Yeah, is it the same for DYCP? where if you don't spend all of that money that they've given to you, you have to pay that back. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that you, they do just cap the funding of what you've actually spent. Yeah, So they, and they won't give you more if you've overspent. That's, you know. No, so it is just that. But if you go under, you then are responsible for giving that money back. Yes. Yeah, so, so bear that in mind. And, <laughs> yeah. and also make sure that you keep very good receipts of, of everything you spent because yeah. I didn't do that but I was quite lucky that they um, didn't pick me to audit because they will at random pick people to look deeply into what they've paid and everything oh, and so you don't know if that's going to be you or not. But how would you, so how would they audit that? Like do you have to keep physical receipts of things or can you have like a an accounting sheet, like an Excel sheet where you log uh, what you spent and where that money's gone or do you have to physically show I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I think that the spreadsheet would probably be enough. Yeah. Um, but because I haven't been, I haven't done that, I don't know what they mm. ask for. They might ask for receipts. I think it's good practice because if you're, if you're doing this in order to further your own career as a, you know, if you're like us and starting out and you want to become sort of self-employed artist, that's something you're going to have to do anyway yeah. for the tax man. So having really good records of what you spend your money on, mm-hmm. what's an expense, getting receipts from people, getting invoices from people. Like I should have got an invoice from Rhiannon, for example. Um, make sure you do that and keep it in record. Because even if you don't, at the end of it, get audited by them, you know, you, you've had practice on doing it mm-hmm. and you've then maybe found a way of um, keeping track of your spending that you didn't know that you was good for you at the start you know well i have a, a google excel sheet that i use my budgeting that i do my budgeting on mm. so um i found a template that google offers as well which was free um and i edited it it has expenditures and income and all the different income streams i have so i've included um like the monkton arts award for that prize that's 250 yeah. into it and then i can look at the end of the year how much of a net profit yeah, obviously I'm not making anything. <laughs> I'm, making I'm, really, I'm not making anything. I'm making minus, minus money. money. That's me doing this as a hobby outside of my full time job. Yeah, but I do keep track of my budget because I don't want to. I don't want to commit tax fraud accidentally. <laughs> yeah, no. Exactly. So it's important to do, even if you're doing it as like a hobby job. Yeah, and, and also to work out if you're actually making a profit on anything you're doing. Yeah, and with it's worth, yeah. So I, I obviously spent a lot You are not year, making a profit. Not making money, <laughs> but that's because I've spent a lot of money investing in... Um, equipment. Equipment. Obviously, I spent a lot of money on the market stall, investing in the table, the cloths. Um, I've invested in the lovely... Uh, Podcast stand. stand that we're using currently. <laughs> um, we've just got these lovely new mics. Hello, um, hello. But these are all things that are a one-time cost. Yeah. So hopefully, eventually, as I build up, um, it will 
be a bit more fruitful yeah. <laughs> than it has been. But yeah, I've done a lot of startup costs. I've spent a lot back into yeah my hobby and cool. and yeah. and if you're a, an established artist who's going for DYCP, you've probably already got that down. Yeah. You probably already yeah. do that if if you're already earning money from your from your art. Yeah. So that's probably going to be an easier process for you. But if you're newbies yeah. like us, yeah, then <laughs> it might seem really weird at first. But um, mm. it was something that I regret not doing because it would have been the perfect opportunity because it was a really self-contained project that had mm. I had already planned what I wanted to spend. Year, it was fixed. It was a year. I could have spent that. You know, that's something I missed out on is having that practice. Mm. Um, I, I achieved lots of other things during during the course of it, and um, I want to do some more blog posts, really reflecting on that. Um, I had the the opportunity to reflect on it monthly with Alice as well. Uh, but I don't have anything written down. I think I'd like that for myself. And if yeah. in retrospect, I think I probably would have liked to take more. Um, more photos as well. I mean, I, I have quite a few, but um, it would have been nice to have like a nice uh, physical collage. I think of the yeah. So I did that with the Mick Smith mentorship. I recorded it as we went along. Oh, like I cool. recorded his notes and yeah. then I recorded all of my research and things that I did following on between that session and the next one. Nice. And I now at times I go back to that. I go back to that quite regularly to relook at what advice I got and also what I'd learned as I was doing it. And it was actually really helpful doing it that way. And th- and this is why I wanted to do Substack, to be honest, because mm-hmm. I wanted to use that as a, a way of me reflecting on my progress as I go along. Yeah. Uh, like we're doing now with this. It's just another way of doing it. Yeah. yeah. And so I can go back and find the things that, you know, maybe the links I've put in or what I thought worked well or didn't, didn't work yeah, well. Yeah, because your mind moves on, doesn't it? And yeah. Sometimes to, yeah. you might need to come back around to something that you were doing before definitely um, but it's also really helpful to then share with other people and share that knowledge like yeah me, you saving me quite a lot of money on public liability insurance. I also like yeah. teaching other people is learning it helps you solidify in your mind what you've learned if you teach other it yeah. people yeah. um so you know it's that could mastering if you're there yeah. you are. ask the teaching. teacher she knows <laughs> she knows <laughs> but that could form part of your application like maybe you want to try a new creative way of recording your progress Mm. like I think if I went back now I would um, put funding in for a really cool 35 millimeter camera a really like 35 millimeter film and I want to do more of it so maybe like a really nice one Mm. and a bunch of film and then use that as my basis for um, and it's got to be easy and And fun yeah it doesn't have to be easy Writing on in a notepad, it, it could be yeah. Because I, I tried to do be real, didn't I? Yeah, at the beginning of the year, I was like, I'm gonna one take, a day, every take day, every day, and I did it for about three weeks. <laughs> and I've not touched it since. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like a new, you know, a new a form of creativity that's outside of your. Like we spoke about in the previous podcast about um, burnout. Mm-hmm. Fact it maybe factor that into your funding application. You know you're going to be doing this, and it might be stressful. Maybe there's something you want to do alongside it that's going to be a bit easier and factor that in. Mm-hmm. But it's all going to be conducive towards you becoming a better creative than you are in your in your current state. Like mm-hmm. I my after that year, my creative practice has just gone. Yeah. My style is completely different. I've had time to experiment. Well, you went digital as well, didn't you? you went oh, yeah. Paper based to digital. And you had experience working, like doing a workshop. You'd not done that before. So that was no. new. I'd literally, just before I started the DYCP, I'd only just got an iPad. Mm. And before that, I was analog, yeah. you know, drawing on a piece of paper, painting, like scanning it, and scanning <laughs> it, and editing yeah. it. And I love analog work. I love collaging. I love the texture and feel of things. But by god does it take so long that's the thing like you, <laughs> you need a a way of making your process quicker when you need it to be quicker yeah so i think it, it is lovely to go back to that analog and doing it like paper based especially if you enjoy it but it's not effective time wise when you've got a lot to create in such and you've got a lot time. to learn yeah yeah i think it's definitely pays to have experience with digital as well yeah just so that you've got two things to as a visual yes. artist, it doesn't yeah. maybe doesn't apply to all types of creatives, but mm. as a visual artist, it's it's 
But then for other creatives, it's good to experiment with other ways of being creative because it can all feed into your, hmm. yeah, into your practice. Um, I mean, like I'm not a photographer by any means, but I love playing about with it. <laughs> yeah, but you love, yeah, you love working with the camera. I do. Yeah. But I like video, like playing with videos and video editing things like that. That's something that I enjoy. And that's why you're the podcast editor. <laughs> And I am not. <laughs> You're the talent. I'm the talent. <laughs> I think we've gone over quite a bit, really. Um, I'm, yeah, so... You know, if you want loads more information and links, go to my Substack because I'm going to be really delving into funding a lot more. Mm-hmm. But hopefully we've answered a lot of questions. I mean, I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. Yeah, I mean, I definitely... I'm more aware now of what it is and I didn't realise quite how much the funding was. I didn't know if you could summarise do's and don'ts in like so, if you had to put like a neat little package on <laughs> on it what would you <laughs> oh um don't do it a week before the deadline yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially as you get too unsuccessful before they're like no no more yeah so mm-hmm. it's better to wait than it is to rush mm-hmm. don't take the risk um don't um undersell yourself in the application value your time um, another thing that I'll be including in my Substack is links to how to set a day rate for yourself as an artist and how to, to cost up your 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 value. Um, there's some great tools online to do that, so I'll link that. We're just trying to promote that we're worth the money. We are worth, worth it. it. <laughs> You're worth it. Don't undersell yourself. You're worth it. <laughs> You're worth it. You're worth it. <laughs> Don't go in blind. Make sure you know who you're applying to what they want find out what their tick boxes are just do as much research as you can research on successful applications research on um, the organization itself just anything you think you can read stay up late at night on your phone and read it (laughs) (laughs) maybe don't just yeah just read it in your own time (laughs) read it in your own time don't burn yourself out because (laughs) Sarah and Jody from the previous podcast <laughs> would be upset with me. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the do's do look into mentoring. It is it, it, transformational. It's fantastic. Um, have a look around. See if there's any artists that you think are similar to you that you can get along with. And if there's any like um, artist development organisations or galleries near you. Have a look because sometimes they do free mentoring sessions, so you can get, you can try it out before you decide who you you know want to go with. I like taster mentorship. Taster ones, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. there's the one in uh, Southampton that does that mentoring Mondays. That's a great way to sort of see if you're going to get along with that person, and then you could see if they offer it paid outside of it. Of that, um, do be ambitious. Be ambitious with your application. They want to see a step change in your in your creative practice they don't want to see you carrying on doing what you're already doing they want to see you do something completely different and illustrate to them really clearly why that's going to be a benefit to you where you see yourself in like five years after you've done that like what's it going to change for you they want it to be transformational do think about it wider than yourself what impact are you going to have on your community and make sure that you exemplify that in the application and and think think carefully about your connections with your community you know artists do have a huge impact on our the way that we enjoy our day-to-day lives and the way we connect and communicate with one another mm-hmm. and you're a vital part of that so value yourself yeah good <laughs> cool so and if you want to have this all written down and all the links there Go to Sarah's Substack. Yep, say it again. Go to Sarah's Substack. <laughs> and subscribe. Sarah's Substack. Sarah's Substack. <laughs> this has been a very Sarah-focused episode, but next time we're going to come back and talk about something that Jodie knows a lot about. Well, I don't know if I know a lot about it yet. <laughs> but you will do. But I sure am practising. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking about Maker's Markets. Maker's Markets. And Christmas Christmas time. Market. We're going to talk about uh, direct my, selling, yeah. my learning journey this year. I did my first Maker's Markets in July. We'll talk about what I was expecting going into that, any surprises, there were a few. Um, what I learned from it, the advice I got from other people, because 
as we're talking here, I went and spoke to other people that have experience and just was a sponge to all the ideas that I could get from them. And I'm going to be applying that in my last one this year, which is Christmas Market. Yeah. So, yeah. I will hopefully... Sell some cards. Sell some cards and some notebooks. And, some notebooks. and hopefully some calendars if Woo! I finish them in time. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah. subscribe, and all those things, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, I'll see you. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> New boot goofing. We're goofing. New real goofing. New my goofing. I will also close to a marshmallow around my desk. No. Before we just feel sticky. Yeah, it does feel sticky.